Well, buckle up, friends, because this roller coaster is about to get real bumpy. Today is weigh-in Monday, and I weighed myself. The tahini makes the rice very creamy. <laughs> And I've gained weight. And I know why. <laughs> I think we all know why, Chantel. It's because you have BED and also your husband cheated on you and he has probably a lot of other addictions to <clears throat> certain things, pictures and videos online that um, he hasn't addressed. And I'm sure that you're not doing couples therapy to address that. Um, but, you know, the two of you have to figure that out together. Have fun with that. Um, and if you don't do couples therapy, trust and believe he will continue to do all the things he's doing and look at the things he's looking at all day long behind your back. So have fun with that, Chantel. And if I were you, I'd probably be eating myself into a, you know, comatose state as well to cope with the fact that my husband's not attracted to me and doesn't want anything to do with me. So yeah, girl, we see you. We know what's going on. You really don't need to make any other excuses. It doesn't take anybody, uh, with more than two brain cells to figure it out. I explained why in my video yesterday. I didn't watch her video yesterday, but I'm sure she has some excuse about why it has to do with her diabetes or her weight, or maybe she just couldn't control herself around all the candy bars, you know. But take ownership, Chantel. Whatever it was, it's your fault. It's your doing. You decided to put those things in your mouth. Deal with your addiction or don't, but don't come to us looking for pity ever, ever, ever again or your Beezers because I can tell they're fed up with it too. And we're going to look at some of her Beezers comments. And since she refuses to answer some of them, I'm going to answer some of the questions for her. Well, I think that is the B word. She must be concerned about being demonetized every time she says the word binge, but she says it in her next live stream, so make it make sense. Is it or is it not getting monetized or demonetized on your channel? My channel is not even monetized, so I have no idea, but um, yeah, I don't know. Either way, that's what it is, girl. At least you know it. She says nothing else in the video, so there's no point to showing any more of it. Plus, I'm not going to put you guys through listening to her disgusting eating noises. Instead, we're going to look at comments that I thought were fabulous. So these are the comments on this video. It takes an excess of 3,500 calories per week to gain a pound of fat. Your binges must be extreme to put on 13 pounds this quickly. Have you ever taken the time to track your calories and weigh your food? You need some eye-opening reality checks as to just how many surplus calories you're consuming on every, any given day. I agree with that 100%. Food addiction is real. The frantic shoveling of food is chaotic. It's out of control. I'm sorry you're suffering. It's incredibly tragic. I wish well for you genuinely. I suffer the same. Well, a lot of us in the community have struggled with addictions. That's why we know so much about it. And that's why when we see someone like Chantel making absolutely no effort to be accountable or to make any long lasting changes, or not even long lasting, but something that sticks for more than two days, she can't even go more than two days without trying to go back to her ways. And she refuses to measure out her food, to weigh it, to use smaller dishes, things that are number one common sense. But also if you're somebody who's come this far, you've at some point had a doctor or dietitian or someone tell you, you need to be measuring your food. Even if you're eyeballing it, listen, like for me, I just look at the palm of my hand and I'm like, okay, that's how much food I'm eating. And like, if I want to eat more than that, I have to like save it and eat it for later. You have to have some sort of willpower or control. And even in times when you feel like you don't or you're struggling, keep the foods out of the house. I don't know. There's so many things she could be doing that she's not. Um, this person says you have no sense of portion control. You need to count calories. The math is simple. It's calories in versus calories out. Please keep track. You might be surprised. Doing it's not easy, but the math is. Just look at the size of that fish. It's not meant for one person. You're killing yourself and no one can stop you but you. Yes. And um, I feel like watching her at this point is just watching that slowly come to fruition. And um, it's obvious that she has no desire to change. So I don't really know where it's going except one place. And that's unfortunate. How about finding something other than food to focus on every day? If you learned a new hobby, you could bring your subscribers on the journey with you. It would be a distraction from binge videos, which are clearly making you miserable and seriously damaging your health. Getting out of the rut might break the cycle. Worth a try. 
Yeah, but the problem is, is that Chantal doesn't have a personality to have hobbies. Like, she has to have genuine things that have made her feel passionate or excited. Like, for me, it was always music, and I was really into metal growing up, and I'm still super into metal. I love it, and I also love video games. I've gotten really into a few games recently, and when you're playing the games and you're getting accomplishments, it feels really good, and I'll tell you what, it's a great distraction from eating or from doing other things where I struggle with being mindful about what the heck it is I'm doing. So for someone like Chantal, a hobby would be great. Like go out, figure out like a personality and then figure out something to be excited about. It's like she has nothing but food. That's it. Food and staring at four walls and watching TikTok videos. That's her entire day. Can you imagine waking up and watching TikTok from the time you wake up to go to sleep? And that's it. While your husband ignores you playing Grand Theft Auto and his bedroom of his own probably um and that's it so yeah that's Chantal's life in a nutshell there are so many people that have comments like this as well um they say this may come across as harsh and I apologize if it does what you are eating and the quantity you are eating is not good for you you already know this but now that you have diabetes that drastically changes things it's no longer a case of I might put on a few pounds the salt will make me bloated blah, 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 but you'll feel better in a day or two. You're now playing with your life. Every time you eat like this, it's like putting a gun to your head and assuming that the chamber is empty because nothing super bad has happened before. But the chamber isn't empty anymore. The gun is loaded. And so the outcome won't be like having a bad day or two as a result of your bad eating choices. It could literally be life or death. It could happen quickly or slowly or without any warning. You could fall into a coma or lose your legs first, but you're playing with fire, kid, and you're going to get burned. And we don't want to see that. You have too much to live for, so much life left to live. Don't give up. And don't allow your eating to control your life. Is it possible to pay for weight loss surgery? I know that just before COVID, you could pay to have it done in Canada for around 22000 and have it done within a few months. Is this an option for you? Not physically being able to eat so much might make the cravings more manageable. So you must be new to Girl World. Welcome. You must be new to Foodie Beauty and her channel. But let me tell you, she will never get weight loss surgery because she doesn't take her food addiction seriously. I myself struggled with food addiction. I myself made the choice because I finally had a breakthrough moment where I said, I know it's very expensive. I have to pay out of pocket because insurance doesn't cover it. But I'm going to do this to change my life and to save my life and so that I don't die in 10 years. And I got weight loss surgery and I put the work in and I lost the weight. And I'm still working on maintaining and losing the weight two and a half years later. Foodie Beauty doesn't have the mindset or the willpower or the control to do that. She will never take accountability to make any form of progress, even in the slightest. And I'm not perfect, not by a long shot. In fact, I would say a lot of people are way better at this than me. But I have learned so much. And Foodie Beauty and anybody who is considering weight loss surgery or has talked about it, would know that it's going to take a lot of hard work and someone like Foodie just can't stick to it. So to answer your question, no, she will never ever get weight loss surgery, but um, that would help her because it does help manage your cravings and it absolutely controls your portion sizes and how much you can eat. So even if Beauty Beauty was to resort to going back to eating some of her favorite foods, she would be eating them in much smaller quantities. I'm talking much smaller and it would take a long time for her stomach to potentially get stretched back out if she continued to binge. Now that is something that would be two or three years down the road. And um, for Foodie Beauty, that's possible. And then we see on shows like Thousand Pound Sisters or My my 600 uh, or, you know, My 600 Pound Life or whatever it is, um, that these people sometimes do stretch their stomachs back out and have to go in for revision surgeries. That is very true. I think Foodie Beauty will never take the chance because she knows somewhere deep down in her mind that that's going to happen. And she doesn't want to have to deal with that. She doesn't want to have to deal with it not working out um, once or twice or ever. She wants to continue to eat this way. She's made her bed and now she's lying in it. So Foodie Beauty... This is all I had to say today. I was actually going to cover more of your live stream, but um, I think I'm just going to save that for later because <laughs> you got me all worked up, girl. Congratulations. Um, but for those of you that are new to Foodie Beauty and trying to save her and rescue her with your very helpful and supportive comments, don't even bother wasting your breath. She's never going to listen to you. 
And um, it's really good advice for other people out there who actually are struggling and will actually take it in and will consider doing something like weight loss surgery. But for Foodie Beauty, it's falling on deaf ears. She's never going to actually do it. And she's obviously not going to try any sort of therapy, rehabilitation, or anything. She's over it. And um, I'm kind of over her, frankly. So <laughs> I don't know where this channel is going. I don't know if I'm going to continue covering her. She's really, really going down a dark path that I don't know if I want to continue watching. You know, someone compared it recently to watching a bad movie and feeling like, okay, well, I've watched it like, you know, 90 minutes in, there's 20 minutes left. I might as well just finish this stupid movie, even though it's horrible. And I feel like that's kind of where we're at with Foodie Beauty. A lot of us just want to watch until the end because we've put so much in. It's the sunk cost fallacy. It's just, we've put so much in, we want to see where it ends. But I think we all know where it ends and it's going to be a life by gen situation. So Foodie Beauty, if you're watching this, listening, I know you're not going to care, but um, yeah, you should really stop manipulating your audience and uh, just tell them all that you, you know, you're never going to change because <laughs> because I don't think they're getting it. I don't think they're getting it here. And uh, it's just sad. It's sad to see people that want to support her, but it's falling on deaf ears. Uh, you can't try to help people who don't want to help themselves. That's the end of it. And she's an addict. So it's going to be that way for the rest of her time on this earth. And, uh, you know, I wish her well and I wish everyone well who's struggling out there. If you are, um, just know you're not alone. And I appreciate you watching and listening to the video. I'll be back with more content, I'm sure. Um, thank you so much for listening to me ramble on this time. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.